the power that we can find in podcasting. It can change hearts. It can change minds. It can change the world. Stories change lives. And it takes you to help get out there and tell your story so you can impact, make a difference. Our guest today does just that. He went from hiding himself to really opening up and helping others find themselves and change the world. We're going to talk with Josh Carey today, the co-founder of PodMax. Let's get right into this great interview. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we have Josh Carey with us. He is the host of The Hidden Entrepreneur. Josh, could you please introduce yourself? Tell people who you are, what you do, and how you got to where you are today, please. I absolutely will. Thanks, by the way, Ed, for inviting me on Dead America. I'm already a fan. I love it all. So long story short, today I am, like you said, I'm the hidden entrepreneur. And that's because I spent 40 years hiding. I showed up in every situation, hiding my true self, my true talent, and everything that I was actually capable of of achieving. I did that because I was so fearful of rocking the boat and I didn't want to come across like I was so capable and powerful because then what might happen? You might retaliate if you felt a little insecure about what you're capable of, right? Because if I'm just inadvertently doing my thing, coming up with something wonderful, powerful, you know, quite, quite great, something certainly in my wheelhouse, it might make you feel insecure. And if you retaliated, I felt growing up that I didn't have the the strength or ability to defend against that. So I just avoided it altogether. Now, what was so difficult was behind closed doors, what caused so much angst, anger, depression, dare I say jealousy, was because every moment of every day, I knew what I was capable of doing. So that that, that whole disconnect just created this, this whole miserable person. Now, cut to today, I'm the proud father. I have two adoring children, a seven-year-old daughter, a five-year-old son, who early on in their young lives, I realized that I see what's happening here. I'm the child in this circle. 
I'm the one throwing the tantrum. And they're looking at me like, uh, you got to do something about that. And I made that immediate case to do just that. And I, I knew that I didn't want to continue down that path because if I did, and they grew up with that kind of father, how is that going to wind up for them, right? We know that outcome. So I said, I got it. In this scenario, no more, no how. I'm going to try to just show up a little bit better each day. And that's what I did a few years ago. I said, no more playing small, no more not doing what I know I'm capable of. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to find the people that get this and appreciate this. And I appreciate them and attract a different kind of person into my world. I created a podcast because I said, you know what? I want to, I want to document all of this stuff, see where it goes. And dare I say, I might be good at a podcast. I've never done one before, but I, I just felt drawn to it showed up each and every day looking for opportunity, looking for what's next, trying to improve my day, day in and day out. And those habits just started stacking on themselves. And lo and behold, here I am. I'm a, uh, I'm a show host, over 200 combined episodes with a couple of my shows. Uh, I'm the co-founder of, a, of an event and production company called Pod Max, where we give entrepreneurs and founders the chance to improve and work on their message and record their message on shows and just couldn't ask for a better life because I made that decision to stop playing small. That's remarkable. When we choose to change our life, it makes a big difference in the whole world not only in our life, but your children's lives and the people that surround your children and you, you make a big difference in the world. Podcasting, it's an empowerment tool. It makes you challenge yourself. It helps you find yourself. I love the name of your podcast, The Hidden Entrepreneur. Could you touch on that and tell us why you chose the name The Hidden Entrepreneur? Yeah, so prior to that, I had spent 10 years running my own digital marketing firm uh, and, you know, serving an audience there, building websites, search engine ranking, that whole thing. Now, I was at the peak of my misery, so I attracted exactly who I was, right? I attracted the miserable, angry, depressed, and wondered day in and day out, why can't I crawl out of this, this world? Why do I keep attracting all these crazy, negative people? I, I just have to change something. I don't want this, but yeah. you get... You, you know, you, you attract who you are and you get who you are. So I just couldn't figure it out until that one day where I did and started making the change. I knew that I needed to basically rip the bandaid off because like any other toxic relationship, that business was toxic for me. I just wasn't my best. I wasn't attracting myself. I wasn't doing my best. So I made that very, very strong decision to say, I'm out. I'm done. I got to find something else. I didn't know what that next thing was. I had no clue. But I said, it's just like if you're in a bad relationship, right? You're like, I don't know what relationship is next, but I know this one ain't serving me and I got to go. So I went and I gave myself some time, a few months and just figured out what I wanted to do. And one day that phrase came to me. I said, the hidden entrepreneur. And it just seemed to feel right. It just seemed to work. And having in those few months outlined my story and said, what is my message here? Who am I? What do I want to become? Where do I want to go? What do I want to talk about? The whole hidden concept of, you know, playing small and hiding all of my power, my talent, my ability in exchange for desperately seeking the approval. It never worked. And what's what's quite miraculous is in that shift, I was scared that I would attract the same, you know, when when I'm playing in this negative playground, I feared in the beginning that 
I wonder if I come out with my strength and my power and just start doing things that is exciting and relevant. I wonder if these people are going to retaliate like I always feared. And I said, you know what? I just got to go for it because it's it's never going to work any other way. So slowly but surely, when I started putting those actions into play and started showing up and putting myself out there and doing what I knew darn well, I've always been capable of doing. And side note, I believe we all have that same knowledge, power, and ability. Sometimes we go through phases where we're like, oh, I don't know what I want, or I don't know what I should do, or I don't know what I could do. Mm, I venture to say you do, right? You really somewhere, whether surfaced or slightly deeper in the back of your mind, body, or soul, you know darn well what you want to be doing and are capable of doing. We're just scared out of our minds to do it. So we don't, but you must, because like in my case, not only Are the negative people nowhere to be found because I'm not focusing on them, right? I've given up that fear, which means that they're nowhere in my world. What is in my world are a plethora of growing, powerful people that day in and day out, I see surrounding me like a force field. And I use that to my advantage. And I think about who's on my team, who's on my side, who could I call upon if I needed something? And these people in my mind just surround me. And I think nobody's getting through this. This is great. So by doing what you know darn well you're capable of doing, You attract the very people who are that replica, who are that mirror impression that we all are of each other and who do support it and who do say, wow, man, great job. Look at what you're doing. I love that. I think the same way and everything works out well. That's a powerful message. I love it, Josh. That ties into with you're saying F that noise. There's a five step process you talk about. Yes. Lay into us on that. Let's get the lowdown on the five step process of F that noise. I sure will. So uh, early on when I started seeing some positive results from the actions I was taking, which is basically just methodically, slowly but surely, one at a time, choosing to replace uh, some of the some of the negative habits, patterns and beliefs with slightly better ones. Sometimes it was obvious, right? I'm like, well, I should probably stop doing that every single night or i bet you there's a better way to go about this in the afternoon because that ain't helping any of us so some of things are easy to replace others you have to be a little more deliberate and conscious or maybe it's not the right time but once you start implementing better habits over time i went back in my mind and i said how did i get from there to here with certainly acknowledging that it's all a process and I have so far to continue to go. It never really ends with the, with the growth that's possible and the achievement that is right there for all of us. So I said, what have I been doing? And I sort of mapped out what made it work. And I realized that it came to be something uh, I labeled F that noise. Like you said, yes, F that noise, all that noise in your head that are all your own negative beliefs, but also it's a five-step process. It's a uh, N-O-I-S-E, and I'll certainly break each one down for you. So you could do the same exercise for yourself and see some growth and progress. It all begins with emotion. We go throughout our day and we are methodically and often habitually hit with emotion that something on the outside enters our awareness and we are what we say is triggered, right? And we we get angry, we get flustered, we get annoyed, we get upset, we get jealous, all these ugly emotions that don't really do us every any good. But our bodies scientifically proven 
create these things in our body that become habitual. And then we start craving these emotions. How often in my years past would I put my children to bed and get that routine going? And every single night without fail, I would get into a certain negative emotional state because my body was searching for it because it was a habit. So it all starts with emotion and identifying the predominant emotion that you feel comes into your life time and time again. Now, certainly there's a variety, but let's choose one. So the first thing you're going to do is N, which is name the emotion. You need a sense of awareness here. What is that emotion? Is it the anger? Is it jealousy? Is it despair? Is it confusion? Is it annoyance? Is it aggravation? What is that emotion? Name it. Then we move on to the O, and you are going to own that emotion. That's right. You're going to make it yours and yours alone because that does what? That puts the power into your hands. It gives you the responsibility. If you don't want that and you want to blame others, then this is not for you. But if you're ready to say F that noise, then own it and say, yes, I am, right? That is my emotion. I get it. Then we go to the I. Now we're going to identify with it. And you're going to say, I get it. I am angry. I am frustrated. I am pissed off. Whatever it is, you need to identify with it so we can move through it. Now we're almost in the home stretch here. Now we're going to move to the S and we are going to sit with it. That's right. This could be a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, whatever it takes. But now that you've named it, owned it, identified with it. Now you're going to sit with it and really become a little more aware of when, what times of the day are you experiencing this it? Is it around a certain person, a certain topic, a certain event, a certain time of day? right? Become aware of this. So then eventually you can put some space and distance between you and the automatic habitual trigger of that emotion. And then you could start to see it coming and sometimes even cut it off and say, whoa, I'm going to, I'm going to remove myself. I don't need for that to happen right now. I can go in a different direction, whether it's physically or emotionally. And then once you do that over and over again, and you've really mastered each of those, you segue right into the E, which is you will evolve into the person you've always been capable of being. I love that. That should be a t-shirt. If you don't have it printed, you should print it, Josh. I appreciate so, that, Ed. Uh, <laughs> yes. So finding your voice. That's a hard thing to do, and we've touched a lot on all of the reasons why not and why it's hard, but after you find that voice, it's amazing. Talk about finding your voice, please. You just said the key word. You said it's hard. Sure, one could label it hard, but really what in this world might not take, and I'll use a different word, take a little bit of effort, right? First, you have to want it and not just, yeah, I want that. No, you have to want it and really understand that you want it and what you want and why you want it. If you're, you know, we've heard it before, if your why isn't strong enough, it's never going to work. For me, two things. Uh, my children, after 40 plus years, became my strong enough why. And I'm not unique in that way. A lot of us have that as our why. But I see that day in and day out. And I say, you know what, I don't want to project 20 years down the road in that miserable path. And then I'd see them the same way be sitting in an empty nest on my rocking chair, seeing them seeking approval, didn't sit well with me in real time. So I said, now there's something I can do. If I didn't make the change, there wouldn't be any change I could do. I would just have to watch it. And I didn't feel comfortable with that. The other thing is um, I work out and exercise 
three to four times a week because my why is strong enough. I quite, quite bluntly, I don't want to die sooner than I have to and not be there for my children. So I've said, well, I'm going to guess exercising is going to enhance my life as much as I can and live a healthier lifestyle. So it's a no brainer for me because I have found the why I just want to live longer for my kids. Right. That's that's a very generally stated why, but it works for me. All this to say, how do you find your voice? You put it out there. You have to just practice it. What I just said in that last segment, including F that noise, didn't happen overnight, didn't happen out of the gate, didn't happen immediately, just like the stories I just told, i.e., finding your voice. That's all I've done. That's all I'm doing. So how do you find your voice? You have to speak. It's not easy, right? There's a lot of fear behind it. And a lot of people would rather not do it. Okay. But if you can find your why and it's strong enough and you want to, you must just speak, speak in writing, put it out to your audience in some form, right? Social makes it very easy. Put it in your emails, put it uh, in your, in your newsletter, put it in the phone calls you make, put it somewhere. Again, social, an easy lift. Just get it out there, get it on paper, carry a notebook, use an app like I do constantly. Once you know who you are, what you're about, what your message is in the moment you can start telling it and start getting the message out. Now, I stress the phrase, once you know the message and the stories in the moment, you can start getting it out because things change. I've heard too often from people that I coach who say, you know what, it's not time for me because I don't have a message. I don't know a message. I don't know what it is. Well, A, yes, you do. And B, yes, you do. The message is whatever it is right now, and it will evolve. When I made the choice to leave that industry behind and start something, I, I didn't have a history going forward. I, I didn't have a message but I created it on the fly and in real time. And I started getting it out there and I saw what landed. I saw what worked. I saw what I liked. I leave things behind as I bring in more powerful stories and messages. So to find your voice, you have to speak. And that's why you're a hero in the podcasting world, Josh. So I'm going to be respectful of your time, Josh. Let's talk a little bit about PodMax and on-air brands because I love on-air brands. I watch it all the time. Mm. What you do is Thank you. excellent and people need to get involved with you. So could you outline what PodMax is and on-air brands for people? Absolutely. PodMax, uh, I, 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 I co-founded it with my business partner, Eric Cabral. And we just last week had our 10th PodMax event. We do them regularly on the calendar. And we, we actually started them in person. Then, you know, 2020 happened and we had to pivot and go online, which now it, it's, it works phenomenally well as a virtual event. Uh, so it's, it's really surrounded by an all day event where entrepreneurs and founders have the chance to record as a guest on multiple top shows relevant to their industry all in the course of one day. And we facilitate this whole all day agenda for you that includes those recordings. And in between the microphone recordings, we provide a masterclass full of training and education, uh, plenty of networking built right in. So you network with all the other high level entrepreneurs and founders and the other show hosts and the keynotes. We have a keynote named speaker that comes in and it's really just a tight knit community that evolves. And through the event, we help you identify practice and communicate 
your meaningful message. What we've learned is so many of us playing in this space, doing well in life and in business have one common mission. It's to impact the world. We want to make a change in people. We want to motivate and inspire. That's who we attract. So we put together this thing called PodMax, where before, during, and after the event, we help you do just that. We help you get your message right. We help you practice and communicate that message. We help you master the mic. So when you're recording your episodes, you're going to show up with confidence, with power, with ability. So you can spread your message and do what you want to do, which is impact the world. That's right. And podcasting is a great way to help impact the world. You know, I've it. discovered myself. Yes, I've discovered myself through podcasting. There you go. So before we go, Josh, could you tell people how to get involved with you, how to contact you and how to look you up online? Sure. If the PodMax event sounds uh, intriguing to you, you can read all about it uh, at podmax.co. And you can follow my personal journey at joshcarry.com. Well, it sure has been a pleasure to talk to one of the big boys in podcasting. <laughs> I do appreciate you sharing with our audience. And congratulations. And I hope success for more pod max i appreciate that ed i love what you're doing as well thank you so much for opening this door and inviting me on today you enjoy the day josh thank you appreciate it Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.